My next guest, Craig Revel Horwood. It was like being in some terrible disco in Soho, darling. Your gait, my darling, is extremely wide. It looked like you were wearing soiled nappy. <laughs> I'm starting to fall in love, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> With your dancing, <laughs> darling. <laughs> There we go. Some of the best bits of Craig Revel Horwood is going to be coming to uh, Cheltenham. It's the All Balls and Glitter Tour, uh, Cheltenham Town Hall, uh, Thursday the 25th of June. I'm just going to put it out there. He's my favourite judge on Strictly Come Dancing. There you go. Uh, the interview's surely going to go well now, hopefully, isn't it? Hi, Craig. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I'll be back for more, darling. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to do the All Balls and Glitter Tour. It's going to be fantastic, I think, for the audience to see a different side of me. Obviously, they'll get that part as well, you know, because I'll be talking a lot about Strictly and backstage gossip and all of that sort of stuff as well and be answering a few questions. But it's more of an entertainment show and it's more of an evening in cabaret with as well. So it's, it's, it's putting a whole theatrical experience together for people and a lot of surprises. Of course, I'll be singing, which people don't know I do, and I'll be dancing, which people will expect, but not they. Well, obviously, I'm by myself, so I've got to do um, some solo dancing, so that'll be interesting for people as well. But uh, a good, fun, sort of vibrant, uplifting night is what they, people should expect. All right. With a few uh, costume changes, darling. With oh, a few we, costume changes. We want the costume changes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How does somebody so ridiculously busy, uh, on, on Strictly as a judge and all of that, how, how do you get time mm. to kind of plan a show? Do you get lots of support? Uh, I have a director. I mean, obviously, I'm a, a director myself and I write myself, but uh, I've decided to uh, employ people around me to uh, give me the notes, you know, to tell me that I'm terrible <laughs> and to get better. You know, I think you can't do all that yourself. I think you can't put all your eggs in one basket in that way. So Lisa Kent is directing, which would be amazing. And I've worked with her before, you know, as, as a choreographer and a director. And she's fabulous. So uh, we're piecing the show together as we speak now, just um, concluding all the, the songs that are going in for content. And, uh, and the stories, of course, and the big surprise sort of in Act One, which I'm looking forward to as well. Oh, but I can't sort of I can't really say anything you about can't because tell I want us anything it to be a surprise. It. Yeah. Although she may make an appearance, that's all. Um, <laughs> that we love obviously we love gossip, and if you're a fan of Strictly, it's a, you know a lot of it is about gossip. Is this stage show? Do you, do you kind of learn a little bit sort of behind the scenes of what really goes on? Oh yeah, I'll be talking about a lot, talking a lot about that, and I'll be opening it up to the floor in Act 2, uh, you know, as a Q&A, you know, but I only want people that ask really difficult questions for me to answer. I encourage that sort of behaviour, you know, okay. I think it's good. You know, like if, for instance, someone wanted to talk about same-sex couples, mm. I'm up for that. If people want to talk about, you know, why people left the show or whatever, I'm up mm. for talking about anything. And plus, it's really interesting to hear, you know, I think my side of the story uh, behind the scenes as well, you know, because we get literally 20 seconds to say what we think about someone's dancing. And I have to be honest and to the point and criticise them on that particular night and on that particular dance in the hope that they might improve it the following week and get better as a dancer. When I take my judge's hat off, I'm a bundle of joy, actually. I actually <laughs> smile quite a lot and I have fun with people and I can sometimes be very funny. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what happens in this show. I think people are going to be shocked. I think they really are going to be shocked. I love Seriously. this. I love this. kind of Which would be great. Yeah. And that's oh. why I called it the Old Balls and Glitter Tour, because it is based on my first book, which was quite raunchy and quite sort of out there, you know, when I was you know, quashing all the stories that News of the World were putting up about me. I decided, well, why someone else is selling these stories? So I've decided I'm going to do it myself, you know, and just sort of get every single skeleton out the closet come clean and say this is what happened and this actually is my life you know so i'm going to be making fun of myself i'll also um you know have some poignant moments as well which would be lovely and some and some great songs and tunes that people can sing along to if they wish 
Well, we're all going to be there. Uh, Thursday, the 25th of June at Cheltenham Town Hall. Uh, you were talking about um, same-sex partnerships and Strictly. Um, yeah. Some people, Someone was saying in the office to me, actually, we're, you know, we're, hopefully we're going to talk about that. And, and actually, this is something that you've spoken about for, for many years, isn't it? Yeah, for five years, I sort of brought this up. I th- And plus, I've just experienced it myself in Australia as a judge last year because I go as soon as the Strictly Come Dancing live tour finishes on Sunday uh, I go off to Australia to judge uh, the show there and last year we had uh, you know two guys dancing together one was dressed as Courtney Act and um, his real name is Shane and of course uh, he rehearsed as a boy and then when it came to showtime he put the lashes on their wig and all of that and danced as a girl Uh, because you do in ballroom you do have to decide who's going backwards, you know. So, uh, so that was sort of a good way to do it. But also, he danced uh, as a bloke with him as well. Which, uh, and you know, Australia, you would think, you know, that macho um, image that Australia has accepted it. 100%. I mean, there isn't any, I don't think there should be any divide. And I don't think, you know, I think strictly or just dance uh, should be all inclusive. And why not? I, I don't see any problem with it at Absolutely. all. In the last and who th- knows, this year it could be it. They exactly. might go with it. They in might the, go with it. In the last 30 seconds I've got, I promised I, I'd get you to mention Elaine Proverbs, who's uh, on our Strictly panel. She's Gloucestershire dance teacher, James Hamilton and Linda Cook. They've got to wait till the autumn for Strictly uh, to come back on the air. I just promised you'd say hi to them, Elaine and, and James and, and Linda. Hello, Elaine, James and Linda. You know what, my darlings? Be fab you less, and I'm going to give you each a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Just for the fact that you teach people to dance, because I know that can be quite torturous. OK, thank you so much. Good luck. We'll see you in the summer. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Thank Take you. Uh, Craig Riverhall talking to me live on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. A little bit about his story coming up after half past as well. Right, a little bit earlier on, we were talking to Craig Revel Horwood, who is bringing his All Balls and Glitter Tour uh, to Gloucestershire. It's going to be here on the 25th of June, Thursday the 25th of June at Cheltenham Town Hall. I can get your tickets, cheltenhamtownhall.org.uk. He was talking about his love of Strictly in the last half hour. Uh, but also, actually, his story begins kind of on the other side of the world in many ways. Yeah, that's where I was born, that's where I grew up, that's where I had to train and that's where I got my first job as a dancer and I worked there until I was 23. I was 17 when I got into West Side Story and then at 23 I decided to go to Pastures European and I moved to Paris and I had a year in Paris at dancing at the Lido de Paris and singing at the Moulin Rouge and then I got a job in Cats the musical which was the first ever tour which started in 1989 and I did that through till the summer of 1990 and then I joined uh, the original production of Miss Saigon in the West End and had a career in the West End uh, directly after that of course and then became a director choreographer and because that happened Strictly happened and then this is where I've ended up (laughs) (laughs) it's like sort of yeah it's like a kind of atlas of the world isn't it Your, your career yeah, it is because I've been I've worked on Broadway, I've worked in America on American tours, uh, all over Europe, of course, for various things, dancing as well as directing operas, and um, I've had you know quite a, a lively twenty years. I have to say, or actually thirty years to be honest, because it's uh, thirty years. Wow. Well, over thirty years since I left Australia, amazingly, and that's why my accent, I suppose, has has gone west, but. Um, but it's been fantastic and I've been very, very lucky, you know, to have the opportunities and to also, you know, choose the right fork in the road. I think that's where, you know, it's not all just luck in that way. I think you do have to make choices in life and right ones. Mm. You must get a lot of people contacting you who, you know, are, are either dancers or a, a dance college or whatever, not trying to recreate your career because you can't do that, but actually getting some tips. What 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 would you say to somebody who wants a career in dancing? Not necessarily a judge on a, a huge show like Strictly, but, no. but just, uh, you know, a, a career that you can actually live on, if you like. Yeah, I think you have to obviously keep training, you know, as a dancer and certainly as a singer and actor. That's really important to keep all three aspects going because dance does not 
last forever you know you're like a footballer or a sports person your your body will give in at some stage after the age of 30 so i think you have to prepare yourself and i tell everyone you know don't put all your eggs in one basket if you're training as a dancer and that's your passion then do that but also if you love the entertainment industry go and have some vocal lessons go and have some acting lessons you know because i think primarily you have to be an actor first a singer second, then a dancer last. That's and good, good it, advice. And yeah. yeah, and it also you should always think like that because otherwise you won't have anything, any sort of bank for the future, you know, and I think that's important. Unless I mean a lot of dancers I know at the Lido have become lawyers, have all, all changed their jobs or become mothers and, you know, family people. And, uh, and it's always difficult, you know, when the body runs out, when the beauty sort of stops. And especially a show like the Lido, where you're only there for your technique and what you look like. So uh, you've got to be really savvy with what you do. Wow. And I encourage people to follow their dreams, their passions. You know, I think that's the important thing because a lot of parents do try and turn their children away from a life in the theatre or a life as a dancer. But it can be hugely rewarding. And there's a lot of things you can do away from that. You know, uh, if you don't make it, you can become stage management. You can become theatre design. You can become ballet design. You know, there's a lot of other aspects to the profession that are really good earners as well you know it's not necessarily probably dancing is probably one of the worst paid actually in the world he is a true professional isn't he craig revel Horwood. he's coming uh, to gloucestershire chelton town hall thursday the 25th of june as i say i believe you can get tickets now chelton town hall uh, org uk it's the all balls and glitter tour there'll be some strictly secrets revealed i'm sure